Welcome back to the Sol 20 restoration. This video, we're going to try to rebuild the keyboard. And can we do it? I don't know. We're going to try. I got a few ideas. We're going to try some experiments. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take these old foam. What? how it was is there's a metal disc or it's some sort of mylar film disc and then there's supposed to be a piece of foam attached to it which is disintegrated so we're gonna take all these discs out and underneath that disc there should be a little piece of foam under the foam there should be another clear plastic disc supposed to be some clips that hold it on but if this is a really old keyboard they're just going to be stuck in there and that's going to be a little bit of a pain that cause us a little bit of a grief so what we got to try to do is get this disc out of there is there a disc or is it just the foam let's see it's some sort of there's no clips holding this disc as I can tell. Some of the videos I watched or things I read about it, there's clips and these are not clipped. This is definitely, definitely been glued to the plastic in there. Well, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. This is just coming apart in pieces. This is going to take a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing cleaned up and ready for new pads if we can make them. Some people say that a Sun Type 4 keyboard has the same kind of pads, but I think the people that have these Sun keyboards and are trying to sell them on like eBay and whatnot realize that these pads are available and the, the price of these Sun keyboards is, I don't know, the cheapest one I could find was like 30 or $40 and that was like in Europe so it's going to cost 30 or $40 to get it over here. So anyway, it looks like it was about 100 bucks for one of these Sun keyboards so we're going to try to make our own pads. Now the big problem is, is how do you test the capacitance of the old discs? Is there a way to do it? I don't know. Like I, I'm not a an expert in these kind of things. But there might be a way that we can maybe kind of get some sort of measurement. Let's just get all these silvers out of here. It's going to take a long time to clean this thing up, I think. The silvers are just falling right out. That's not a big deal. But the, the discs that are stuck to the plastic the plungers they were glued in there. That's not going to be easy. So, so after we do this, what I think we're going to do is we'll do some experiments with different kinds of different kinds of materials to see if we can get the keys working before we build up some new foam pads. I've been trying to track down some foam that I think is suitable. I went to like the uh, craft store and did get some some foam, but it seems kind of dense. Um, some of the shipping foam, I think the foam piece needs to be about a quarter inch. And some of the shipping foam, which of course I've probably thrown away over the years, the perfect thickness. I don't have anything, I can't find anything. I went to the shipping, one of the shipping suppliers see if I could get it like a one foot by one foot sample but they didn't let me cough it up. I can buy a whole roll for $80 but that'll probably be a lifetime supply of keys or two or three lifetime supplies of keys. It's just not. Then I'm back up to getting the Sun keyboard. Yeah these foams are just completely disintegrated. They're, these metal discs are just popping right off. 
So when you see it, it looks like it's it's metal, but it's not metal. There's a plastic coating over the metal, so it's not metal making contact with, and like closing the contact of the key. It's raising the capacitance, and I did find some information that says that the capacitance is around between seven and fifteen picofarad will activate the key switch. So I don't know how, if we can measure the capacitance. Maybe if we throw an oscilloscope on the, on the, the trace or the, the contact and then apply some different materials like one of these original pads or even a 15 picofarad capacitor across and see what it does on the scope. And then we can try different materials and compare that if that gives us any kind of uh, indication of what material is going to be our best so that's I think an experiment that we'll try so we'll get this taken apart and I'm going to gather up a bunch of materials so what I found some some like transparency film that's used for uh, like scrapbooking and it has it's clear plastic and it has sticky on one side. So I was thinking maybe we glue that to the piece of foam with the sticky to the out. That way we can put the sticky on and stick it down in the hole. And hopefully it would stick to the plastic if we can get it cleaned up. Um, and then foam and then whatever substrate that we find that's gonna give us our best chance of reliable keys. I don't know. We could probably be reuse these discs. They look pretty good. But what I'd like to do is do a whole sheet and then like try to punch them out with a punch. Let's try to pick up the pick up the pace. Because trying to glue all these things back onto a little round disc is gonna be super time consuming too. But that might be the way we end up having to go if we can't can't find something that's gonna reliably do this. So if anybody has any suggestions or has, any, has had any luck doing this, put it in the comments. And hopefully we can get this keyboard working because it seems like the computer is going as, as you recall from the last video. And uh, but to be able to test it fully we want the keyboard going then we can do some more testing and then, then what I'd like to try to do after that because this has a, a floppy controller would like to get the floppy drive going. Another thing that we're going to try to do is it came with a couple RAM cards, but they're both 8K. And if we were on a run like CPM or something, we need to have like 48K. And I don't have any. I have one other 4K S100 board. So that's only going to give me a total of 20K, which is not enough to run CPM. So 48K is what we need to shoot for. So I did build a homebrew RAM board that is a RAM ROM board with some serial ports from my Altair 8800. We'll do a video on that, on the Altair. And the reason why I built that is the Altair was very early and whoever originally had it only had two slots. And all it had was the CPU card and the 1K RAM card. So it was very primitive setup. It was a very, like, that's the bare minimum an Altair came when it was first released. And so it came with a couple extra, like these. You can see it'll move the camera. The S100 bus socket. There's a couple of them in the bottom of the case of the Altair, but I didn't want to solder them in. I just wanted to kind of leave it stock and original. Just didn't want to mess with it. I just wanted to keep it in a very bare bones configuration, but I did want to play with it a bit. So I built a card that could do. 64K of RAM, 
and or 64k of ROM. So anywhere in the address space, you could put the, you could put stuff in the ROM, and you could select RAM. That way I could, and, and with a couple serial ports. That way I could like run basic in ROM and get the Altair doing some stuff. Hook it up to a terminal. Just a little bit more than flicking the switches on the front and playing kill the bit which is super cool and that's kind of why i wanted to leave it original and so that was just in its very rudimentary form so i'm gonna build up another one of those boards for this i think and that way i can put it i found a couple programs to make floppy to make like a cpm floppies and and some game discs and it's a program that you load in and then it will write a floppy but what I was thinking of doing is putting it in ROM so it's just always available so if I need to make a disc you fire that up and then you load the, the disc image through the serial port and then it burns it to the floppy so I'm gonna build up that homebrew board we're going to run that in there. That way we can get the 48K RAM. What they did was, which is another weird thing, is they stuck their ROM, their, like, their BIOS or however you want to call it, the ROM monitor, at C000 in hex, right in the middle of the address space. Well, it's near the top, but... So there's a... It kind of like... I don't know what they could have put it up in... Well, E is where the floppy interface works. F is really nothing, so that's an empty. You can use that for user RAM. And D for user RAM. So why they didn't put it higher up, I don't know. There must have been some sort of reason. Maybe they, they probably figured you'd never need more than 48K of RAM because back in 1975 and 6, that was a massive amount for one of these 8-bit computers. Okay, I think I got all those out. Okay, that's all gone. Alright, I'm going to gather up some of the materials. And we're going to come back. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to clean all this, this foam out of here. And you don't need to watch that. So I'm going to gather up some materials, clean up this foam. And we'll come back and we'll try to do some experiments with some mylar film, some foams, see if we can get some sort of measurement to see if we can get a reliable reading of something. And then we'll build up some pads, and we'll try to put the keyboard back together, and we'll see where we're at. So we'll be back in a second. Well, I'm still at it here. Got a couple. It's a fairly time consuming. Of course, I do have to have the keyboard that has the pads that are stuck to the surface. I guess most of them are, puts this back to being an early saw. Down in these down in these switch holes here. There'd be four little clips like that molded into this plastic that the disc, the bottom disc, the bottom disc here. So it's a piece of foam. I'll see if I can get a picture and, and throw it up. It's a piece of foam, a, a clear disc, piece of foam. And so the ones, most of them that I, I understand, have these four clips. And it's a little plastic disc that just clips into there and holds it in. These ones have more, this is kind of more like a goo, like a plastic, that was probably a thin, like a sticky double-sided tape or some, some, something along those lines. And these are stuck, so I have to get the gunk off and once I get all these sticky pad pieces off. There's like really no foam left, the foam has just disappeared. And hopefully, I can find something that's going to be able to stick back because it's not like a solid surface. It's just a, it's a 
hollow. If you see, there's only a tiny outer ring that's going to be able to have the glue. It's hollow in the middle here. It's too bad that these don't have clips. Anyway, I'm going to keep going at it here. And uh, I'll be back. Wish me luck. Well, I got it, got it all cleaned up. They actually, the disc came out kind of in a glob. So none of the sticky residue stayed on the on the plastic. It all kind of came out as one blob, but it took forever. Uh, what time did it took? Yeah, it took about an hour, not even. I'll just vacuum it up. Maybe wipe it with some alcohol just to get any grease that my fingers are on in there. But that's ready to go back together. It's all cleaned up. Too bad that they didn't have the tabs. It would make it a lot easier. I wouldn't have to deal with the sticky goo and to put it back together. Now I need to come up with something that's going to stick to that. Hopefully this sheet that I have, clear sheet with sticky on one side, is going to stick. So we're going to have to do some experiments. But Okay, on to the next step. Let's test some materials and see if we can get some kind of reading. Okay, now we're going to try a couple of experiments here. Um, I don't really know, this, this is not scientific in any way. I don't know how to measure the capacitances of, of any of these things that we're going to test, but I put the oscilloscope probe it actually would be better on my analog scope but th this is filming better um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try a few different materials so this is I'm gonna put an original disc on the key pad and we're gonna touch that and see what it does okay so this is the original disc and it's making key strokes I'm looking at it up on the other monitor and I, when I tap it so we're going to say that's the baseline. This is the original disc, and that's the signal we're getting with it. So now we're going to try my finger. And what I, I was doing is like reading how much capacitance is on your finger. And it's about 100 picofarad somewhere in around there. So what I understand is this keyboard needs to be somewhere in the range of 7 to 15 picofarad for it to activate the key, keyboard. So a finger's 100, so. And I'm and it's activating it, so I'm gonna hold my finger there. So you see it's going way, the top peak is the, similar to the other one, but the bottom is going way down. Okay, so I have a 100 picofarad capacitor, and we're gonna touch that across there and see what that looks like. Going, the top seems to always stay about the same, but the bottom going down. So that's pretty much where the finger was. So 100 picofarad capacitor and a 100 picofarad finger pulling it about the same. Go back to the original disc. Now I have, we'll try some of the materials that I want to use. I was thinking, like, people say, oh, you use a, a Mylar bag or a, a, a party balloon. So I got a Mylar bag. It's basically the same as a space blanket too, right? But what I don't like about this is that we don't know how it's made or, or how, what. It's probably the cheapest, thinnest metal that can be possibly known. There's no probably... Um, consistency this is rolled off and they make balloons and, and space blankets out of this material and print this for like a gift bag so we'll throw a piece of this on there and see what we got yo there it is oh my goodness it's all over the place Okay, so that's very similar to the original pad. 
So that would probably work, and it does give a key press. I'll flip it over and see what happens. Absolutely nothing on that side. So this would probably work, but like I said, uh, we don't know how it's made or the consistency of it. So um, I know people have used them, but with some success and some not. But I'm gonna say that I don't want to use this. If it, if I have to go back to the original pad, I will. So what I came up with, something that we can at least see what's going on, and that is anti-static bags that chips come in. And you can get a data sheet for these bags. And I'll show you the layers. So what I did is I ordered four different kinds of anti-static bags. And we're gonna experiment with these things. I'm gonna put the data sheet up for you. And it shows the layers. It's like, I don't know, some of the, so I got four different types. Some with the, the metal out, metal in, some that have two layers of metal, and then one that's like really thick, like a, has a thick polyester layer, then aluminum and polyester, then aluminum, and then a heavy gauge of poly, another plastic. So I got four different these bags, so we're gonna see if these things do anything. So. It's actually kind of humorous because I ordered them one each. They're, they're actually really reasonable in price. But they put the things, or in these, they put them in giant plastic bags, which is nice because they didn't crinkle them up. I thought they'd come folded and rolled, but they're, they put them in a giant box like this and they shipped them like that. So they're not crinkled. So if I'm going to have to glue these to a substrate, that's going to work out quite well. So which one is this? This is anti static bag. It'll tell me the series 1500. So the series 1500 is what is this? I got. I'm just looking at the data sheets, and I'll put them up on the screen for you. Series 1500 is metal out. So series 1500 metal out. So over, I'll just cut a piece of the top off here. This is the Series 1500 bag. So, let's metal out. Where did my... Okay, that's looking good. Very similar to the original piece. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down. Nothing. So that's a good candidate. So the metal out bag, and that cons consisted of abrasion resistant coating is on the outside, then the aluminum shield, then polyester, and then another layer of static dissipated polythylene. So that's the one that's not we're not getting anything. So that's the inside of the bag and it doesn't do anything. So there's two layers, then the shield. And so if we flip it over, this is the outside of the bag. And it's giving us a good, it's looking good. It looks very similar to the original, what do I do with the original pad? Drop it to the ground. Put the original pad back on there. Baseline. So there's our original pad. And this is series 1500. Very close. Okay. Series 2000. Now series 2000 is. moisture bag it has a static dissipated polyester then an aluminum shield 
and then another layer of polyester, then another aluminum shield, and then another static dissipate polythylene. I, I believe that's how you say it. Don't go. <laughs> well, let's cut a little piece of this one out. So this looks like the metal is outwards too. So the thing with these things, these are going to be fairly consistent in their manufacturing. There's no guesswork. I got a data sheet for it. So this is the T Series 2000. So this is the outside of it. Okay. It's not quite given it's the same. It is activating the key, but it's not going as high or as low. Let's flip it over and see what we have. Nothing. That's good. So one side is non can doesn't work at all. So this is the one that has two layers of metal. And I'm gonna say it's not quite as good as the first one that we tested, the series. This this one here. 1500. That's getting us closer to the original. I'll put the original back on. This is the existing original pad. Next bag, series 1000. Now 1000 is a static dissipative coating, polyester, aluminum shield, and then static dissipative polythylene, I believe is how you say it. That seems to be that that one layer doesn't seem to be doing anything. So, I think this is going to be even worse. Let's try. Oh, that's nice. That's good too. That's very close to the original. Flip it over, should be nothing. Good. Go back to the original disc. So this is the series 1000, which is pretty much the same as the original disc. So I'm going to say the series 1000 and the series 1500 probably the series 1500 is a little better. Let's try that. 1500. Yeah, the series 1500 seems closer to the original disc. So so far, that is the bag that we're going to go with. Got one more to try. This one is series 2700. And it's very thick. I thought thick might be good too, so I'll cut a little piece of this one out. So, the Series 2700 is made up of a super heavy gauge static dissipative polyester, then an aluminum shield, then polyester, then aluminum shield, then heavy gauge static dissipated polythylene. So, let's see if this does it. It is way heavy. No. So both these bags with the double aluminum, that's the other side with no, no signal. Both of these bags with the, the double aluminum don't have as much, I guess, we're not measuring capacitance, but they're not capacitating. And this one, it, it, does, it does trigger the key, but it's not as signal up anywhere near where the original disc is. So I think we are going to go with the Series 1500, seems to be the best. Well, this, like I said, this is not scientific in any, any way. It's just, I'm just trying to gauge things. So the finger pulls it way down. 
20 picofarad capacitor. It's a little bit more so when they say around 15, so I'm going to say that the original disc is probably could be around 15 or in and around there somewhere. So that's the original disc. This is the series 1000. Here's the series 1500. So I think that's the one we're going to go with. That's the original disc. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll clear this mess up. And the other problem, now the next thing is the, the foam, the substrate that we're going to use. Um, because these things aren't going to clip into the keyboard, like most of them, they have to be glued in. Adds a little whole complication to the thing, so I need something. I have a few things, so I'll get, I'm going to clear this mess up, and we'll get reset up, and we'll try to build some foam pads. Okay. All right. Well, I gathered up some of the equipment. Um, we're going to try to make some of these foam pads. Uh, this is going to be the first attempt. Not really happy with any of the things I have, other than I think the the, stat, the anti static bag is going to be is going to work. I have faith in that because it's an old keyboard and doesn't have the clips. Um, I found these self adhesive laminating sheets, so hopefully the glue so it has a, like a glue on one side. It's thick, so. It would actually be good if it was the other, the non-glued side would be good for the little steel, the little discs. So anyway, we're going to try that on the one side with the sticky and hopefully it's sticky enough to stick to the keyboard. And I have this piece of foam I got from the craft store. I'm not particularly happy with it. Uh, I think it's probably too dense, but I couldn't really come up with anything else that was going to work for me. Um, I found, well, there's the, like, the shipping foam that you get. Um, I couldn't get a piece, I couldn't find any of that quarter inch other than buying a huge roll of like 200 feet for 100 bucks, so I wasn't gonna do that. Um, so this is a half inch thick, there's two pieces of quarter inch glued together. So this possibly could work. Um, it is dense, but not as dense as this piece of foam. This, so if this works, the keyboard might be a little stiffer, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. I did find this open cell. It's like an air conditioner filter. It's the proper thickness, but it just seems like it's it, it springs right back. But it just seems like it's uh, just too thin. and I, I, It seemed like it needed a little bit of pressure. So I don't know if there'd be enough pressure to to activate it. So we got that stuff. We got some um, spray adhesive. So we'll try that. And then we're going to try to. I picked up a punch that's seven sixteenths, and then we're going to try to punch some of these things and see if it comes out deformed or. So, we're going to give this all a shot, and I have no idea if this is going to work. I'll take one of these laminating sheets out of here, and let's see what we got. Okay. There's the sticky side. Cut this out. See, I think I'll use this non-stick side for sure. I know what I'm going to do with this. You'll see. Ah! Not very crafty. This is the stick side. Cut this. I 
I failed kindergarten, obviously. That can go there. And then we got the anti-static bag. Let's cut that apart. Oh, God. I can't remember what side is the, this, the good side. I think it's, this is this metal out so the outside is the, the good side. or something along those lines. But we got two bags that are gonna work, so I guess worst case scenario we can we got four tries. The adhesive isn't gonna work, so this is the outside. That's the side we want to use. That's the inside. Alright, so what should we do? Let's stick. Let's stick. We stick. Stick the foam. Where do we want to try to stick this to the foam? That's probably not. Okay, now let's try this here. Spray up the foam. on this thing. Hopefully this thing just doesn't eat the thing.
I don't know. This is this is crazy. We'll see what happens. It's experimental time. This this adhesive you can you probably could have just done it on the one side. It only takes a few seconds for it to get tacky, but you can leave it open. This, this, this stuff's pretty, pretty heavy-duty stuff. Well, let's just kind of plop this on there and see what happens. It's going to stick all to the plastic. Let me get it out of there somehow. It's damaging. Kind of missed, a little bit crooked. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. Pretty smooth. Not very good aim. Like I told you before, I failed kindergarten. Obviously. Okay, let's get the other thing done. Let's put some stuff on this side. For a second. Now, uh, will it, this foam even punch out? Will it even will it work? Is it even gonna be? What's the best way to try to do this here? doesn't come off once you touch it. It's over. No, no coming out. No. No uh, second chances here. I wonder if we can trim it. No, that's not trimming very well. I guess we'll just go for it. Punching this out, I really don't know how I want to do that. Piece of plywood. And I think we might want to put this on the top. And then, where's that punch? Try hammering a piece right through. I don't know if this is going to do anything. Okay. Got some wood. See that? That's the good side. I need something to push that out. That's not going to damage it. Sort of blunt instrument. 
cut it. We got some wood, but what does it look like? Okay. Well, maybe we can push it out. There's a piece of wood there. Okay, it looks like the whole thing fell apart. Oh, maybe not. Well, there's the disc, a wooden disc. Oh, hit the ground. Actually, came out not too bad, but I'm thinking there's a reaction with that foam. Something's not looking right. It seems all gooey. Let's try hammering out another one. Sticky stuff came off the bottom. That did not come out very good. All kinds of problems there. Oh, I think there's just some, some oil inside that. Okay, that came out crooked. not working. Oh, there's grease in here. Okay, I'm gonna clean that grease out of there. Alright, let's try pounding on another one. You have to hit it a little harder in, I think. I wonder if we can stack them up in there. Until they fall out the top. I don't know. We'll try. See what happens. Something went flying out. Not bad. Not bad. Get out of that. I don't know if these things might be a little too thick. Put one in the keyboard, see where we're at. Where we're at. It's going to fit in there. Okay, it sits in there. It comes way out. So, uh, it might be too, too, uh, Might be too too dense. Comes out pretty high. Goes back, so it's not gonna touch and then it's gonna hit, so is it gonna make a difference? They look good. It looks good. The, the material looks looks excellent. I'm a little concerned that the foam is too thick. Let's try sticking it right in there. Let's try to peel the sticky layer off. Let's see if it actually sticks inside.
sticking it in there. Stay in there. That's the question. Well, it seems to stick. I'm going to hammer out some more of these things and I'll be back in a minute. Well, I think I've pounded out about half of them now. We'll uh, stick a couple in. I do think the foam is a little too thick and, and a little a little too heavy, but I don't know. I've been looking for a while trying to find a foam that I was going to be happy with. Um, so basically, peel off the sticky side and kind of center it in the in the key slot. Stick it in. The the that paper actually seems to be working quite well. It seems to uh, stick it in and it. Doesn't seem like it's gonna come out, but uh, they look good, that's for sure. See the ones that I've done here on the end. So the problem is, is so they they're they're hidden. They they go back, and so when you push the key, it comes out, but it doesn't have much give. So they're gonna be a little bit little bit sticky, a little bit like tough. I'm gonna say. So I got half the half of them punched out now. So I'm gonna stick the half in, and then I'm gonna punch out the other half and stick those in, and then we'll put it together. <laughs> and hopefully, I got the metal on the right way out. And uh, we'll give it a test. See if the keyboard's gonna work. They do look good. They they look smooth. It actually worked quite well. The adhesive stuck to the foam good. It didn't dis it wasn't disintegrating. It was actually some grease inside that punch. I was getting afraid there, but they seem to be pretty level, pretty square. So uh, the big test will be when we try to run it. So they stick out when I hit them, they come out just over an eighth. And these pads are supposed to be, this foam is supposed to be a quarter. So it could be a little thick, although it's down about an eighth, and then it comes out about an eighth. So that's probably okay. But like I said, it's a little, a little stiff for my liking. Okay, I'm gonna go back to punching. And we'll see you back in a minute. Yep. All right, punched them all out. It was very noisy. My bench was flying apart every which way. So I got half the discs put in. I'm gonna go stick the other half in, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so I got it all cleaned up. I'm gonna put the keyboard back together and see what we got. I'm gonna. Put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on these pads in case I got any greasy finger on it. Still not, I'm gonna find out about this, but I think that foam might just be a little too aggressive. But they look really good, the pads, very consistent. They came out good, that glue worked well. Consistent, nice and clean. A little bit. I've been touching these with my fingers. Getting the grease off of there. Okay. 
Okay. And let's see if we can put this thing together. Like so. Well, this is going to be interesting. Will it work or will it not? Be really careful with these screws, they're just going into plastic. Tighten them, strip it out. You could probably move all those keys have a screw thread in them. So I guess if you strip one out, you could take the housing and move the housing over. So it'd be a little bit of a pain, but it could be done. So, I think what we'll do is we'll see if the keyboard works, cross our fingers, and then we'll, that'll be the end of this video. And I think we, then we can start testing the, uh, test the computer. We can see if we can get a memory card working. And then, I guess we can try to see if we can get the floppy card working. And then once we got that all working, hopefully the parts for the transformer modification will be in. We can do that and we can look at the any of the other modifications that might need to be made to bring it up to a, a newer revision. Not necessarily apply them all, but maybe some that are very important. Or find out if any have been already applied. Oh, someone was asking me about the keyboard. If it gets how the decoding is done. So the the decoding circuit is on the keyboard itself. So this what comes out of this cable is um, the ASCII, the hex vert values in the ASCII of the ASCII codes, and then so the. 0 to 6 bytes or the bits 0 to 6 are your ASCII codes and then bit 7 is used for control codes so all the all the decoding and everything is done on the keyboard itself so it spits out the ASCII so I hope that answers the question. Not the screws. I'm going to think that this keyboard is going to feel a little bit stiff. Just because of that foam. But if it works, it works. And then maybe if I can find some foam that feels better and it's working down the road and I'm not happy with the way the keyboard feels. We could try to change it out again, but if it's going to work and it's going to be usable, then we'll just go with what we got. So, there it be. Yeah, they don't travel down very far. Which I hope isn't going to be a problem but they, by touching keys. All right, we're gonna go get the computer, get that on the bench, get that hooked up, plug it in, and see if it works. <laughs> Let's print it. All right, we got the thing, the keyboard hooked up, back together. 
Turn it on. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, we have our cursor and our prop, so this is where we were when we had no keys working at all. Um, let's see what we got. Okay, well, we don't have a key in number one. That's not a good sign. Oh, we do have a two. No number one. A three, four, five, no six, seven. Oh, there's an eight starting to work. Nine. keys are working this is a lot better than what we had but I'm wondering why that is Case lights on. Let's see if that turns off. Okay. Upper case is turning on and off. Local on and off. Shift lock. Shift turns it off. And that's not coming back on. V. No. X. C. The ones that are working seem to be working quite well, but they're not all working. I wonder if that's a problem with the circuitry. All right, after doing some uh, scratching, head scratching, soul searching, I figured out what was wrong with the keypads. When I was hammering these things, when I was hammering these things out, I was hammering them this way around. And what was happening is it was making the disc concave because it's it's all due to this foam that I'm using, which isn't definitely not the proper foam. So I'm gonna have to I, down the road. I'm either gonna I'm gonna find when I find some original different foam, I'm gonna try to change it. But when I flipped it over and hammered them out this way, what it was doing is it was making the the disc very flat on the bottom because this foam. When I pounded it, it kind of made it into a concave and it wasn't snapping back, so the disc wasn't getting full contact <clears throat> on the pad. So once I started hammering them out upside down, the discs were coming out perfectly flat with nice sharp edges, and so they all seemed to be working good. So I'll fire this up. And Shift lock is working. Shift off upper case. We'll leave it in upper case. So we got all our numbers. Letters are all working. Everything is going there. Right. 
it feels all right. They're, like I said, they're kind of stiff, clear. Everything. Cursors are moving around, so all the keys are working really well. Nothing, it's all seemed very stable and solid. We'll see how long it lasts. Hopefully it's gonna work good. Like I said, we're gonna change out the key pads if I can find a better foam. This is a closed cell foam. I think it's even like a, a neoprene or something like that. It's uh, definitely not good to use because it kind of squishes and forms. So if we can find some open cell foam that's fairly dense, I think that's the ticket because that's what the original foam was from what I understand. And it needs to be fairly dense so that it has a little bit of pressure to push on the pad. But not so dense that it's going to, when I hammer them out, that it, it forms. So overall, it's fairly successful. These uh, anti-static bags, that's the ticket. That's, um, I think that's the best thing to use because it's uh, manufactured to a standard. Whereas like those mylar blankets, the emergency blankets and the balloons and whatnot. You know, who knows where those are coming from. At least the, this is a consistent, you know, the lot 191. They're all made the same. Comes off a big roll industrial. And it's for electronics, so. And it seems to be, you know, it's working great. All seem to be going good. Okay, so that's the video. We got the keyboard working. Success, yes. So, the next video, we're going to start playing around with the computer to see if it works. Do some, uh get some memory going see if we can get a disc going so any questions or if you've had experience building redoing these keyboards and trying to get the kind of foam to use you can leave it in the comments and thanks for watching until next time we'll see you again bye